In this video, we'll build on the concept of binary search trees by introducing the AVL tree. This is a binary search tree that keeps itself balanced when you add or remove nodes. Binary search trees work really well when they're balanced. When searching for a node in a BST, every step we take deeper into the tree reduces the number of nodes we need to consider by half. Put another way, the number of nodes that we can look through in k steps is 2 to the k. If n equals 2 to the k, then k is the base2 logarithm of n. So a search through a balanced binary tree is an order log n operation. However, adding and removing nodes can cause a binary search tree to lose its balance. In the worst case, we can turn a balanced tree into a linked list with order n performance for search, insertion, and removal. To avoid this worst case behavior, we would like for our trees to be self-balancing. The first self-balancing tree was invented in 1962 by two Soviet mathematicians named Adelson Velsky and Landis. This tree is called an AVL tree. Can you see why? The AVL tree adds one more constraint to our binary search tree. Not only does it have to be binary, and not only do each node's left and right subtrees have to be partitioned by the node's value, now we also have the constraint that every node's subtrees can differ in height by no more than one. Here's an example of an AVL tree with four nodes. Adding in each node's height, we can also see each node's balance factor, the difference between the heights of the node's two subtrees. When we insert a new node in the tree, we update the height and balance factor for each node along the way. We can do this by returning the change in height from each recursive call to insert and using this in the parent node to update its height and balance factor. In reality, we only really need the balance factor, not the height, but we'll include heights here for clarity. Anyway, once we get to node 17, there is a problem. The balance factor is now negative two, which is outside of the plus or minus one range allowed by the AVL constraint. To keep this an AVL tree, we have to do something to rebalance the tree. Rebalancing in this situation can be accomplished by a single rotation of the subtree rooted at 17. First, we decide which of 17 subtrees has the greater height. Since the balance factor here is negative, we know that the left subtree rooted at 8 has the greater height. We then take that left subtree and make it the root of the subtree that used to be rooted at 17. Finally, we complete the rotation by making the old root of the subtree, that is 17, the right child of the new subtree root, 8. Once we do this, the new height of the subtree ends up being exactly what it was before the insertion, so there are no further height adjustments to make on parent nodes. Here's another example, this time generated from visualgo.net. This visualization doesn't include balance factors, so take a moment now to annotate it with heights and balance factors, maybe in your notebook. Once you've done that, Figure out where the number 2 would be inserted in this tree, and how that would affect the heights and balance factors of the other nodes. What is the root of the subtree that requires rotation? One key difference between the last example and this one is that the new subtree root, 4, already has a child node on its right, the 5 node. When we rotate 4 up to the subtree root, and 6 down to the right of 4, where can the 5 node go? Pause the video again and take a moment to work this out. Continuing on, we see that the right child of the new subtree root becomes the left child of the old subtree root, occupying the pointer that used to be used for the node, which is now the subtree root. That probably sounds a little confusing, so go ahead and watch those examples again as many times as you need to in order to really understand what's going on. In a moment, I'll encourage you to try out more examples yourself on visualgo.net. But before you do, a word of caution. So far, we have looked at examples in which a newly inserted node appears to the left of the left child of the node that wants rebalancing. In such cases, all we have to do is a single rotation to the right. You can probably imagine that the mirror image is also true. If we add a node to the right of the right subtree of a node and cause its balance factor to become positive 2, we need to do a single left rotation. We can call these newly inserted nodes outer nodes, since they appear on the outside edge of a subtree. If we add an inner node, however, we have to do something slightly more complicated, which we'll discuss in the next video. So, I suggest that you go off now to visualgo.net slash BST, click on AVL tree, and try out a few examples of doing left-left or right-right insertions. Try creating a tree choosing a value to add, predicting how the tree will be rebalanced, and then using the visualization tool to check your prediction.
Once you understand the idea of single rotation, we'll practice the implementation in our next class.